Kensington congregation. Uh, this morning's word is uh, from the book of Genesis 9, and this is after Noah has come out of the, the ark. And um, Genesis 9, verse 1 to 28, as I was going through these verses, I just, I, I was asking God, what is the lesson here? And I came, I brought it down to three sections. One, the first one is love. And I, I read verse 11, God says to Noah and his sons, I now establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of the flood. Never again will they be flood to destroy the earth. What a promise that God makes. If we think um, Noah and had just they had just gone into the ark and God had destroyed the earth because of the incredible sin that was upon this earth. But yet God comes out and all that is washed away. And he's now at a point where he, he, he promises so much love. I think in his promise, he, he, it shows the, the, the care that he has for humanity and for generations to come. And he says, never again will I destroy the earth with such as I have done now. And we see that um, this leads ultimately to the cross, which is the blood of the new covenant. And as I was reading that, I went on to first, uh, Psalm 89, verse 34. The Bible says, my covenant, I will not break nor alter the things that have gone out of my lips. His promises are never changing. He made that promise and it was a covenant promise, which was sealed and, uh, you know, through his word. And we see a covenant promise of love that is also demonstrated through the finished works of Christ through the cross. And I thought, God, you know, in this life today, you know, things can happen that seem so bad. And, you know, if we look at this, this was a sinful way that obviously angered God, a way that he, he destroyed the earth. And in our life today, when things happen, our reaction should be love. You know, the same love that God demonstrated to the earth is how we must respond with so with love that is, you know, beyond some of the things that happen around us and that that love comes ultimately from Christ and learning about his ways and how he shows that love through us it, it, to us uh, secondly it was imperfection verse 18 onwards God we are told of the sons of Noah that came out of the ark and God starts to give promises you know he says I will bless your sons I will increase you I will multiply you I will do all these things and in verse 21, yet we're given an account of Noah as he lies inside the tent and he's drunk and he's lying naked on the bed. And I thought, God, wow, why is this just gone in there? And it's that imperfection. And I think sometimes, you know, we, we, we can put so much on ourselves where we all have our imperfections. But yet we look at a man here that was used mightily by God. You know, despite some of the imperfections that he has, and we're given an account here of one of those where he lies in bed, is naked, and you know his sons come, and it, it ends up being you know something blown out of proportion, really, where he's you know uh, putting some curses over his sons and, and, and so forth. But you know, yet it is that man that was used by God. So in, I think this in life, you know, it's, it's it makes us remember that even us there is there are some imperfections in our lives but it doesn't mean that we're not loved by christ god loves us even we see that in a man that was mightily loved by god lastly i see the fulfillment of purpose in god's time and um within the the last part of this verse actually after the flood it says noah lived 350 years and so he lived on this earth a total of 950 years and we remember when then when Noah went into the ark, that means he was 600 years old. And how amazing is it that even after so many years in our human eyes, God fulfills the promise or Noah's purpose. And we look at our sometimes our situations and things in life around us. We're thinking, God, it's taken so long. You know, I believed that God promised this for me. I've not seen it, you know, and sometimes it's easy to lose faith or to lose hope even or to think you know maybe you were wrong about this but you know just reminding how God's timing God's ways are not the same as ours his way his that he looks at time is not how we see it in our human eye and really it's it's, it's um 
great demonstration in Noah here of God using him after so many years and yet he still fulfills his purpose upon this earth. So perhaps God has promised you certain things in your life. Just remember and trust if it is in line with God's way, God's will, God's word, and he has promised you, you will see that in the land of the living, just the same way as God did it for Noah. Because if it's, if it's something that he said, remember that uh, Psalm 89 verse 34, the things that come out of his lips, he will not alter. So he will fulfill that over your life. So we, we just give thanks for God's covenant promises. We give thanks for the new covenant through the finished works of Christ. We know that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. And as we ponder upon those words today, remember he will not alter those things that he said. So he is still God and his word remains. So Father, we give you thanks and we ask you, Lord, to remind us, Father, of your power of your truth, my God, because those things that you speak and that you have said, they will not be changed. You are an unchanging God and your promises are still true today. Thank you, Father. Amen.